I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with RCS. Very poor specific impulse and mediocre thrust to weight ratio means that they have very poor mass efficiency and they force you to use an additional fuel type. Additionally, they're pretty draggy and most of them have very poor thermal tolerances. On larger craft, you can make up for this by using Werner RCS, which have a bit higher ISP, better thrust to weight ratio, and use liquid fuel and oxidizer. But they're still fairly draggy, and the ISP is still pretty bad. And for truly enormous craft, even Werners are just too small, forcing you to spam large numbers of them inflating your part count. Given these drawbacks, a while back I came up with an alternate solution using the Cal 1000s from the Breaking Ground DLC. In this episode of KSP Dark Arts, I'll be showing you how to make RCS using any engine. Before we get started, it's important to mention one of the drawbacks of this setup. Namely, it will not respond to SAS, only player input, and if thrust is off-center, thrust output will not auto-adjust for the unbalanced torque like stock RCS would. Thus, this technique will work best on a craft that has a center of mass that does not change much during flight. That way you can get the engine locations tuned ahead of time to minimize torque. Don't worry though if it's only a little bit off, as reaction wheels can usually take up the slack. To start, let's look at making translation only RCS, leaving torque to our reaction wheels. We will make use of the RCS translation axis groups, which are bound to JL, left right, IK, down up, and HN, forwards backwards, by default. We will add three CAL controllers to the craft and assign the play position of each controller to one of the axis groups and make sure to set the play position to absolute mode. By default, KSP considers the axis to be at half position when using absolute mode and pressing no keys. Since the default playtime is 5 seconds, half position is 2.5 seconds. Next, we place our first pair of engines, keeping in mind to place them over the center of mass. To be able to respond to CAL control, the engines need to be set to independent throttle and it is important they are not in symmetry. So after placing them, we hit the remove from symmetry button on one of them. On the left-right axis group, left corresponds to start position, and right corresponds to end position. Firing the thruster on the left side of the craft will push us to the right, so we want to map it to fire when we hit right on the keyboard. So we map it onto the cowl so that its throttle is 0 from 0 to 2.6 seconds play position, and then from 2.6 seconds play position to 5, it rises from 0% to 100% throttle. For the thruster on the right side of the craft, firing it will push us to the left, so we map it starting at 100% throttle at 0 play position and decreasing to 0 throttle at 2.4 play position. Since the default play position is at 2.5, neither thruster will fire until we hit either the left or right translation keys, at which point the corresponding thruster will fire. Now we just have to set up our up, down, and forwards, backwards thrusters in the same manner on the other two CAL controllers, keeping in mind the following key mappings. I corresponds to down and start, K corresponds to up and end, H corresponds to forwards and end, and N corresponds to backwards and start. Taking the craft for a spin, we see that our ant engines are now working flawlessly as translational RCS, and if we enable fine SAS mode with caps lock, they even respond correctly by throttling up slowly. Now, if we want to use custom mapped engines as rotational RCS, things get a lot more complicated. Properly balancing the center of mass becomes much more important. After all, if your translational RCS is producing a small amount of torque, that's easy enough to compensate for with reaction wheels. But when you're relying on RCS to supply the torque, having it unbalanced can be a big problem. Additionally, we will need at least 6 cals and more thrusters. The exact number needed varies. If they're placed at an angle equidistant from all three axes, we only need 8, but that's at the cost of 42% of our specific impulse lost to cosine losses. Since half the point of making our own custom RCS was better efficiency, we will go with 16, two each for four directions, and four for the final two directions. This can later be upgraded to just 12 thrusters, with a setup that is harder to initially configure, but easy to upgrade to from the 16 thruster version. We have six Cal 1000s and four clusters of four engines, one on either side at the front, and one on either side at the back. We will be using the same throttle curves as for position, with throttle either going from 100 at 0 position to 0 at 2.4 position, or from 100 at 5 position to 0 at 2.6 position. Before I start, I've gone ahead and bound the 6 Cal 1000s to the axis groups already and renamed them for convenience. Starting with pitch, the top front and bottom rear thrusters pitch the nose downwards when fired, and so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 0. 
bottom front and top rear thrusters pitch the nose upwards so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 5. For yaw, the front right and back left thrusters yaw to the left, so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 0. Front left and back right thrusters yaw to the right, so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 5. For roll, top left and bottom right roll to the left, so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 0. Top right and bottom left roll the craft to the right, so these get mapped to 100 throttle at position 5. For translation, the rules that we learned in the translation only case hold true. Right thrusters at 100 throttle at position 0, left thrusters at 100 throttle at position 5. Top thrusters at 100 throttle at position 0, bottom thrusters at 100 throttle at position 5. Front thrusters map to 100 throttle at position 0, back thrusters at 100 throttle at position 5. Going on a little test drive, we can see that the small reaction wheel built into the pod is more than enough to fix any minor errors in SAS, as long as we use our custom RCS for any big movements. If we want to upgrade to the 12 thruster variant, all we have to do is remove four non-adjacent thrusters from the top and bottom faces. If we start by removing the top front left, we can also remove the top back right, the bottom front right, and the bottom back left. It makes intuitive sense to me why this works, but I can't really explain it rigorously, so source, trust me bro, it totally works. And just like that, we've made full custom RCS. Whether you're using ant engines as translational RCS to squeak out a few more kilograms of savings on fuel, or turning a behemoth using mammoth engines, this is a handy technique to have available. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.